Coming up, we'll talk about an interesting program that has to do with one of these. That's straight ahead. Coming up on the morning report. Stay with us. Almost looks like winter, as you can tell. A little different for the first full day of spring, but I'll take it. It's pretty beautiful. The snow has been coming down steadily here in Bar Harbor since about 3.30 this morning. It wasn't sticking to the ground at first, but it definitely is now. We have a nice coating. And the roads, I will say, not super icy, not too slippery, but there is definitely a coating of snow. The equipment is in tough condition and they are ready for a change. The skate park has been in several locations around the Queen City for more than 10 years. A location process for the new park has started. Tentative new locations for the new park include behind the Parks and Rec Department, the Bengal Waterfront, or possibly in another park. Chaos. There were probably 10 sheriff's cars here at one point is how neighbors describe Saracen Road after a man was shot Saturday night. Looked like they were chasing a couple of people and then everybody came back and they were back over with the uh, gentleman that evidently got shot. The Travis County Sheriff's Office confirms that account. Multiple shots fired and um, people were reporting that they saw people running in their neighborhood, which makes perfect sense because when you hear that people run out of their homes, people run into their homes. Kristen Dark with the Travis County Sheriff's Office says the victim, a man in his 20s, was taken to the hospital with multiple gunshot wounds. Three minors taken into custody. A shock for Todd Collins, who has lived on Saracen Road for almost three years. It was a little uh, upsetting at first, but then I figured the Sheriff's Department has it under hand. Walt Oye. When I was diagnosed, I was given 36 months. Has terminal liver cancer, and last summer he was told he didn't have long to live. His biggest worry, though, was what would happen to his dogs, Doc and Diego. Doc was easy. He'll go to family. Diego, though. He loves people. He loves to run, and he's a red healer. Diego needed something more. And I thought, well, I can't die and have him in limbo. And with the clock ticking, Oye turned to Facebook. He wrote, it tears my heart out to lose him, but it would bring me great comfort when I die that he is well taken care of. I live in the Austin area. But as of last night, I had 52,000 something shares, uh, over 10,000 messages. Actually, at last check, more than 69,000 people had shared it, even more left comments for Oye. It went viral and now I, they crashed my computer and my phone yesterday. And among all those clicks and shares and comments, a solution. Here at the Last Resort Recovery Center outside of Smithville, a rehab center for men recovering from addiction, Oye took Diego there today. No pictures or video, though, because of the privacy concerns of the patients. Diego is going to help the men, but it was an emotional day for Oye. I, I cried down the dirt road. I, it was like cutting a cord, you know, he's like my child. But even though the reason for rehoming Diego is a sad one, the response... I received prayers from countries and people. It's really renewed my faith in mankind, to be honest with you. Has left Oye feeling just a little bit better. In Round Rock, Adele Uchida, CBS Austin News. A show of patriotism and support. That's how Trump backers described the March for Trump rally in downtown Austin. If Trump hates Hispanics, why would 32 percent of their women vote for him? The Latino Trump coalition spoke about the diversity in today's crowd. Supporters say they don't fit in one box. I'm a multiracial American, a feminist, a pro-life supporter. At one point, things got heated between supporters and protesters. Austin police arrested one man for assault by contact who allegedly tried to grab someone else's flag. I don't want to be silenced by people yelling at me or throwing stuff at me. I didn't want to be silenced by the weather either. Jacob Collager came out to observe and show his allegiance. He said the march was all about the silent majority coming out from the shadows. <laughs> Jacob says the rally was also a backlash of sorts after the many protests and the anti-Trump rhetoric coming from Hollywood and celebrities. They're trying to illegitimize his presidency. And um, this is just kind of people saying, no, we do support the president. We voted for him. We still like him. 
I heard this kind of fizzle noise, like a kind of fizzling. It's a sound all too familiar for Ken Vault, who lives a couple homes down the road. His home struck by lightning just two weeks ago. So when he heard that noise again... Well, I went back up in the attic with my fire extinguisher again. I said, what are the odds that could happen for? Except this time, it was a neighbor's home on fire. But then when I looked out the back door, I saw smoke. And then I yelled to my wife, call up 911 quick. Oh, man. By the time fire crews got to the house, the flames were out of control. The problem is, is that the lightning strike hit apparently at the top of the ridge line of the roof. And then it caused a problem from there because it started working down in the attic and we couldn't access it to get up into it. Five family members were inside the home when the lightning struck. This neighbor is like 25 years old. I've talked to people who've lived here all these years. And they've never seen anything like it. Can you say hi? You probably can't tell from that smile, but two-year-old Zariah suffers from six different rare brain disorders. Hey, Mom. One affects her vision so that she's legally blind. Another that used to cause seizures oh. all throughout the day. Cynthia Bryant is Zariah's guardian and grandmother. How often does she get the seizures? Um, she got about 100 a day. To try and curb that number, Bryant says she turned to prescription narcotics. Oh, I hated it, you know, but it was, it was our only choice to keep her from having these seizures. Bryant found another choice in cannabidiol or CBD oil. Taken by mouth with this syringe, Brian says her granddaughter hasn't had a seizure since July. This is a syringe of Zariah's medication. She gets it online. She takes it about three times a day. There are 10 doses inside, and it costs them about $300 a month for just this tube. I would call it God's medicine. She is given a life, and she's, she's thriving, and it, you know I couldn't be happier about that. Brian is able to give her granddaughter CBD oil thanks to a law passed in 2015 called the Texas Compassionate Use Act. Since CBD is a chemical found in hemp, it doesn't produce a mind-altering psychoactive feeling like THC does, the ingredient in marijuana that makes you high. It shouldn't be illegal. Mm -hmm. It should have never been illegal. Brian says the drug has drastically improved the quality of life for her granddaughter. She says it's as important as the food she eats. She just wishes it was more readily available from doctors. No one's going to die from this, and no one's going to die from marijuana. In Round Rock, Jordan Bondke, CBS Austin News. Yeah, they do. That's because it really does have a wide shoulder here off 620. It's almost like another lane for bicyclists, but it really is right next to speeding traffic around 65 miles of speed limit. And if you look across the street, those flags that's where that bicyclist was killed while changing his tire. Austin's EMS rescue teams have responded to 89 calls. Those calls were for people trapped in caves, swept away by high water, or for those who fell from cliffs. Saying they don't want to taint that process right now as they continue to pursue many leads. Live at Austin Police Headquarters, Fred Cantu, CBS Austin News.